Hi guys, Micro here. The new Magister boss is out. It's the new Slayer boss that requires 115 Slayer to actually kill, although you can use a Wilder Pie at 109 to boost it up in order to kill him. In this video, I'll give some tips and tricks and show the loot from 25 kills from the boss. I didn't kill too many because it's just looking into it and finding out the mechanics and stuff for you guys. I may do a video where I try and go for a tier 92 weapon from scratch, farming my own keys and stuff. So let me know in the comments below if you would like to see me do a series trying to get a tier 92 from this boss farming my own keys through slayer and stuff like that but anyway on to the video right time to give this a go to be fair there's no point in trying my first attempt at this boss to be honest because i had no idea what i was doing what to expect or any of the mechanics I literally just sat there smacking his face, tanking it, just doing whatever I can to stay alive. Somehow I managed to actually kill him. God knows how I killed him with everything that went wrong. So this clip is sped up quite heavily and I've done a couple more kills after this and then I'm going to speak through one and talk about the mechanics. Get him. Okay, that was really odd. I had left clicks hidden. I messed it up so bad, but I still killed him. What the hell? Dragon arrowheads, boys. That was great. Uh, don't even know what I was doing. I was just hitting him. Then it was time to actually learn the mechanics and practice the boss so I could show you guys what you have to do. Of course, there were a couple of deaths along the way. I died. He's on 4k HP. So when it comes to actually doing the fight, there's a couple of things you need to keep into consideration. He has a couple of special abilities that he can do, one of them being the one that happened right now and that's the stand still ability where he'll stun you and he'll jump away. If you're using melee you can easily barge towards him after using freedom and that will get you back in the fight nice and easy. So the biggest killer is probably the bottle he throws on the floor. He'll say dodge this and then you'll have to either run away from the bottle or kick it. If you kick the bottle into him, it will deal damage to him, or if the bottle is on the ground near him, it will also deal damage to him. If you stand in it, you'll take 4k damage, and it can really, really hurt, especially if your HP has been reduced. As you can see in this one, I didn't stand in it, so I didn't take 4k, but it was right near him, so he took lots of damage. This helps you speed up the fight quite nicely, and it's definitely really, really useful to do. So I would definitely recommend trying to stand as close as possible so the bottle always goes near him, or if you're a bit far away, try and kick it into him. Devotion is definitely your best friend here. He mostly uses magic attacks, but he does use range and melee attacks at certain times as well. So you can easily switch your prayers at these times to save some food, and especially with Devotion active, it will hit ones. You'll see him smack the floor with his stick and a big orb show up. That means he's going to do a range attack. So then you switch to protect from range. There's another attack he does, which is Asphyxiate, and if you use Freedom, it will stop his Asphyxiate channeling and stop him healing. And the last one is normally he will say something above his head, like, you think you can beat me, and then he'll jump on top of you with melee. So if you switch to Protect from Melee, you'll be fine from that as well. Apparently, if you can DPS him fast enough, he doesn't spawn adds at all, but I never managed to really DPS him hard enough to never have any ad spawn. I would sometimes get one pair of ads, and occasionally when I'm doing really bad, I'd have two. So when he spawns the one pair of ads, if you're using melee, you can easily AoE him down. If you're using range or something, you can kite them so they're standing with him and AoE him down that way as well. Definitely kill the ads though, because they can do a lot of added damage. So if you're not cleaving them down, they will add up, and especially... As the fight progresses, there will be very, very troublesome. So what happens? This is a DPS race. This is a DPS race because as the fight progresses, your maximum HP decreases. By the end of the fight, your maximum HP will be like 3k, and that means that your food won't heal as much and you need to rely on Sara Bruise. So if you can kill him as fast as possible, your HP will never ever be a problem because it will never go too low. It can be really, really frustrating when you get taken down your max HP down to 2000, especially if there's an ad hitting you at the same time, it can be very, very dangerous. Killed him though, I got some vital sparks, yay! 20 vitalist fogs. That's actually not that bad. Well, I spent 1.7 mil on a key. It is actually... It is very bad. God's sake. My melee aura ended, so I thought I'd try some kills with range using my range aura. The accuracy auras definitely help so much here because he's super tanky, so having as much accuracy 
and as much damage in the short period of time as possible, the better it will be. Using range is decent, it does some good damage outputs, it's probably safer than melee to be honest. The adds can be a little bit more annoying with range compared to melee, but they're still easy to deal with. As a whole, if you want to do more damage, I'd probably go with melee to be honest, at least from what I was experiencing. Range is a very, very safe and easy though, so the kills will be much smoother and nicer to do. Still got bad drop, but to be honest, it was way smoother. Need to actually focus on switching to my Luck of the Dwarves. I'm getting too concentrating on the boss and I keep forgetting to switch to the Luck of the Dwarves. Oh well. Nice smooth kill. On to the next. Oh! I got a key to the crossing from him. Are you serious? I saw a loot beam. I was like, maybe this is good. And it gave me a key to the crossing. Ah. <sighs> I guess it's better than any of the other drops he gives, so... But I thought I got something good. Ugh. Also, one other little tip is that if you take a Soul Devourer task, he counts for that task. Your Slayer Helm does not work against him, but Tuska's Wrath still does. You'll hit between 10 and 15k with Tuska's Wraths, and that can be really, really helpful in a DPS race. Also, the fact that he gives 8,000 Slayer experience as you kill him is also insane. Definitely try and get a Soul Devourer task if you can and if you plan on killing him for a long time. As for the loot, we didn't actually get any unique drop from him. I didn't even get any of the crystals you open for fragments. You need 300 fragments for a tier 92 and a crystal gives anywhere between like 2 and 20. I didn't even get a crystal to start actually getting the fragments, which is kind of disappointing, but hey-ho, that is RNG. The loot was really disappointing otherwise because I got 3.8 mil in base drops. I spent 25 mil on 25 keys and I had 4 deaths, which then would be 4 mil more in keys and 2.4 mil in the deaths. This means that I use 31.4 mil just to kill this boss 25 times. And the loot was 3.8 mil. Kind of disappointing. Really sad that I didn't get any unique drops. But let me know in the comments below if you did want to see a tier 92 from scratch series where I go get my own keys and kill this boss over and over again until I can make a tier 92. I think it'll be really interesting in the rates I will get by the end and how long and how many keys it actually takes me to get a tier 92. So yeah. That's it for this video. I hope it gave you some light on this boss. Definitely don't kill him unless you plan on killing him for a very long time. Give the video a like if you did enjoy. Subscribe if you're new for future content. And until next time, see ya.